Welcome back to Lesson 5. In this last video for Level 2, we'll introduce you to the index function. Let's finish up our tennis products order form from the previous video by calculating the shipping costs for our order. First, I'll look for a second over here at what's in store for us on the shipping sheet. It looks like we have a table here that determines the shipping costs for a standard customer. In this table, we have a grid of prices. It looks like we have four shipping methods here across the top, and there are some regions here on the left. The way that I'd like for you to think of this would be, for a shipping method and a region, here is the cost per pound to ship the order to that customer. For shipping method 3 and region 5, 5 is the farthest away from our factory, the price is $3.50. In other words, for any particular table, at the intersection of a particular column and a particular row is one cell in this table. Well, our VLOOKUP lets us bring back a cell in some fixed column if we give it one of these values. That won't work. An HLOOKUP lets us bring back a cell in some fixed row if we give it one of these values. That won't quite work either, will it? VLOOKUPs and HLOOKUPs are basically one-dimensional lookup functions but with this grid here, we have a two-dimensional lookup. Enter the index function. The easiest way to describe this one is just to do it. So let's go over here and start our index function to see how it works. Equals index returns the value or reference of the cell at the intersection of a particular row and column in a given range. That sounds kind of like what we want, so let's play with it. Adding the parentheses, we see two different choices here. Let's work with this first one because it will work fine for this two-dimensional table here where we just have a table or array of cells along with a row number and a column number. The first parameter that it asks for is an array, so all we need to do is highlight this range of cells in our grid here. Please, please, please notice that I didn't include our row or column headers into this array. We just want our data cells here. It'll never work right if you include the headers along the top or the left side. Next, it asks for a row number. Just for fun, I'll put in a four here, comma, and finally our column number. I'll put in a two here, and if I read this out now, I'm looking for the intersection of the fourth row and the second column, which is 16 cents. Hit enter, and I get what I was expecting. You think I'd done this before or something. Let's automate this a bit to build on this concept. I'll start by naming this range of cells as shipping standard since this is the shipping rate table for the standard customer. Now I'll put that into my index function and hopefully we still get 16 cents. And we do. Cool. Next, as you're hopefully catching on to by now, that it's not really a good idea to hard code our numbers in here like 4 and 2. So instead of that, I'll put in a couple of labels up here in these cells here to hold these numbers. Row number, and then column number. And I'll put a 4 in here, and a 2 in here. Now back in our index formula, I'll replace these hard-coded numbers with these cell references. Hit enter, pray that we still get our 16 cents, and we do, so this works pretty well. Let me change this column number to 4 just to see if it still works. And it does, so let's move on and add a bit more to this awesome formula. We've now worked with one-dimensional lookups, and we just learned about two-dimensional lookups. What's next, you asked? You guessed it. There are three-dimensional lookups as well. Here we have an example of multiple tables where we need to find the intersection of a row and a column. Let me first start off by naming each of these cell ranges. I'll name this one Shipping Preferred. This one Shipping Most Preferred. And this last one, shipping Uber preferred.
Now we have four tables. So how do we handle this? Let me add another cell up here for which table, and I'll put a 1 in the cell next to it. Now let me start another index formula right underneath the previous one, equals index, left parentheses. Here we again have two choices on how we want to build out our index function. We just use this top choice, and we now know that we can use an index function using this list of parameters when we have a two-dimensional or single table lookup. This bottom choice, however, allows us to build up a list of tables here in this reference area of our formula, then a row number and a column number like before, and finally an area number, which is actually a number that tells us which of these reference tables that we listed up here at the beginning of the formula that we want to refer to. So we can use the index function with this list of arguments to find a row, column, intersection in a single table, and we can use it with these arguments to find a row, column, intersection in a list of tables. Let's build it. For our references area, I'll add another left parentheses and then list out our tables here separated by commas. Shipping standard, comma, shipping preferred, comma, shipping most preferred, and finally, the shipping uber preferred. Now close up that reference parentheses. Now our row number cell. Next our column cell. And finally, which of these four tables do I want to reference? I'll just click on this input cell here, close up our formula, and let's check it out. Our previous two-dimensional index has this value in it from the top table and this row and column. So if our three-dimensional formula is using the same numbers for row, column, and this which table cell is also telling our formula to reference the first table, so our number should be the same, and it is. Let me change this table number from a 1 to a 3, and our formula should now go down to this third table in our list and get the second column and fourth row, and it does, so that's a good thing. Now that we know our index functions backwards and forwards, let's go back to our orders page and use it to calculate our shipping costs. You'll see that I revised our form up here by adding a few input rows here to contain our shipping weight, our region number, our shipping method, and our customer type. Let's go down here to the shipping cell and get to work. Equals index. Next, list out our four tables again. I should have copied them into memory, but I'll type them out. Shipping standard, comma. Shipping preferred, comma. Shipping most preferred, comma. And finally, shipping uber preferred. Close out our parentheses. Our row number is actually our region number cell here. Our column number is our shipping method. And finally, our area number is our customer type here. This gives us our shipping rate as a cost per pound. So to have this be our shipping charge, we need to multiply this index function by the shipping weight up here. And voila. Finally, our grand total is just the sum of these order summary cells here. So I can throw in a sum function. And this gets us to a comfortable stopping point for this video. See you in the next one.